Mr. Crispin here once again. Now I recently released a video called Machining Cylinders Part 8 and in that video I touched upon an edge finding method that involved using a dial indicator mounted in the spindle. So uh, in this video I'm going to take you through that method and show you a few of the details. Well here's the component on which I need to find the edges and here's the DTI in my milling spindle. Now what I'm trying to do is put a hole in that's on the centre line of this liner and on the centre line of this block, so the centre line in two different planes. Now, to begin with, this is going to be a bit like clocking a ball. I'm going to be sweeping from one side of the component to the other, and I'm going to be setting the spindle on the centre line. So we're going to set this up now, and uh, you can make life very hard work for yourself by trying to get an indicator reading too early, uh, when you're actually nowhere near. So I like to set up by eye first, so I'm going to roughly bring the uh, indicator onto the vertical centre line and then I'm going to sweep by eye and just get the general indicator range in the middle so you can see the radius of our indicator from the spindle is a bit big because we're not touching anything but we are approximately over the centre line so without moving anything on the table I'm now going to move the indicator body in slightly until we just get a little reading uh, and there we are we're touching on one side not the other make an adjustment and uh, once I get that set we can then turn to the dial and start fine-tuning now there's a few uh, key points I need to make here this is what I'm actually trying to achieve so the component is shown in pencil and the stylus is shown in green the sweep of the stylus is shown in blue and at those positions the spindle is represented by these two center lines as you sweep the indicator it will reach a natural high spot on either side and we're trying to make it so that when it reaches those high spots we've got the same number if you achieve the same number on both high spots then you are in the middle of the component and the center line of the spindle and the center line of the component are on top of each other care is required in this kind of setup because you have to do this within the travel of the indicator stylus in other words you have to avoid going into over travel with the stylus if I brought the spindle too far over as the stylus came round it wouldn't be able to get over the corner and it would max out uh, and that'll be obvious on the dial because your needle will stop moving another key point is in the setup of the stylus so we must make sure that we are not touching the shank we need to be touching the ball and the first thing we're actually going to do when we come to look at the dial is set the vertical position and find the high spot so uh, we'll do that now so we're going to bring our component on and hopefully you can see just there we reach a high spot as shown in my drawing a moment ago now all I'm going to do to kick off I'm going to find the vertical centre line so I'm going to wind the stylus up and down and find the high spot right that has put the indicator on the centre line vertically I'm now going to turn to find the high spot and set the dial to zero Check we're still reading zero, yeah. Sweep all the way around, don't crash into anything, and climb back up again. And the high spot there is on six thou. So I'm going to wind in to three thou. Wrong way, three thou. Re zero. Check we're still on zero. And I'm turning the clock by the way using the spindle, not by actually grabbing hold of anything uh, on the clock. And there we are, we're on zero. So we have now found the centre line in that plane. Now if those corners are too much work for your indicator or the component geometry means you can't sweep all the way around, then there's no harm in uh, finding a high spot and then actually winding the table, or saddle in this case, all the way out, rotating to you, you've cleared the corner, and then coming back in again and gently finding the high spot again. So uh, various methods for doing that, and uh, hopefully that was clear. So we've got to where we wanted. We are now uh, on the centre line. We've got zero here and zero here, meaning that the spindle centre line is on the component centre line. But what else have we established? Well, we've established that when the clock reads zero, in real measurement terms, it is the radius away 
from the spindle centre. So let's imagine this is a 30mm diameter. When this stylus reaches zero, this portion of the stylus is 15 millimeters away from the center line. Why is that? Why is that useful? Well, next up, we've got to set our longitudinal position. Now, at the moment, this vertical center line is just in no man's land. It was wherever uh, it needed to be to get around these corners. But if we do a bit of thinking and we turn the clock back to its 90 degree position and find the high spot on the end, we will actually have put the spindle 15 millimeters in from this end face and therefore if when the clock is zero here the spindle is 15 it's a very quick calculation to get to any drilling position so I'm going to show that next All right so without touching anything on the clock uh, we are on zero zero still yeah All right now I showed the drawing to this end face but my datum for this is actually the main body end face so we're going to come up and I'm going to bring the clock in. We have found a position whereby the clock finds a high spot and I'm actually touching the end face of this block not the liner by the way. So let's find the high spot and now wind the saddle in until we are at our same zero. So now when the clock reaches its high spot it's reading zero. That has put the spindle centre line 15 millimetres or how much the radius was over this component. So I'm going to wind in till the uh, clock is clear and the nice thing about this is my backlash is already taken out in the direction I'm travelling so all I need to do is move in um, half the width of this block minus the radius that I've already travelled which in this case is 42.863 easy to do on the decal scale system lock the carriage and that should have put the spindle right over the centre line now um, as someone may have guessed, I can actually use my original method now to double check this. If I set my clock to a radius picking up on this edge and rotate it 180 degrees, we should be zeroing out the same on both edges. So let's do that. So with any luck, you will be able to see that the indicator is coming to rest on zero. I'm now going to spin around. This is a good example of where I can't actually free the clock by rotating it. I've got no choice but to drop the table and um, turn around. And just another little tip, you may see there that I've only had about a third to a half's worth of loading on the clock, so the needle's only going around less than a half. Um, if you start going around beyond the whole turn, you very quickly lose track of where you are. Just a little indicator tip. I'm going to spin this all the way around now, and hopefully you'll still be able to see the zero in a moment. Um, we're going to bring that back down, find the zero, and... Uh, minus a thumb. So that's the method, I hope that all made sense and um, in the case of this block where you are truly in the middle you'd probably be better using the side to side method I just showed the other method in case you didn't need to end up in the middle. At this stage I'm just going to do a bit of a safety check to make sure I've not ended, down, ended up being a, a whole turnout or something silly like that, that's okay so we're going to proceed and drill this hole. And if you want to see me drilling that hole, have a look at Machining Cylinders Part 8, uh, if you haven't done so already. And I might say I've been greatly encouraged by that video because it appears to have been quite popular. Now, uh, with regards to the method I've just shown, it's a bit like using a four-jaw chuck. At first, and to try and demonstrate it, it seems rather time-consuming and fiddly. But once you get the hang of it, it's very accurate. And uh, the beauty of using the indicators you can actually see the errors at play uh, rather than say with an edge finder just having to calculate and um, hope you've done everything right. Um, so that's all I have to say for today. Thank you for watching and see you on the next video.